Welcome to Slow Talk Live. I'm James Davis here in the studio in San Luis Obispo, California. And we've got some exciting guests coming up in the studio uh, via Zoom. Dupris Brescia uh, from Dupris Brescia Gallery in Paso Robles. In the studio, Lynn Schmidt, a fellow veteran artist. First time in the studio with Slow Talk, hopefully not the last time. And we're going to be talking about the veterans uh, pop-up art show and cafe that just happened in Paso Robles. But before I get into the content of the first uh, the first hour, I want to thank our sponsors, the uh, the folks that make this session possible. Uh, I want to thank Dining for Charities. Check them out online at diningforcharities.com. They sell the half price dining certificates and also provide uh, donation income to local San Luis Obispo County nonprofits. The nonprofit of the month, uh, the charity partner right now is uh, Wood Humane Society and all the great work they do throughout the county. 15% of all your certificate purchases go uh, to Wood Humane Society. And so we commend um, the work that they do and uh, just want to let you know to thank them by purchasing those certificates. Also, Slow Talk Podcasting Studio the premier podcasting development, uh, production, recording, uh, marketing distribution studio in San Luis Obispo County. Check us out at slowtalk.com. We have a whole section there in our podcasting studio services. And so, gosh, it's always fun to have somebody in the studio live. That's what we're all about. And um, today, it's my pleasure to welcome fellow veteran, fellow artist, Lynn Schmidt. Lynn, welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been nice. Um, gosh, I just met you a few weeks ago at the uh, Pop Up Art Cafe. Yes. And uh, fi- finally found out what an art cafe was. That means they feed you all day. They bring great coffee and <laughs> pastries and sandwiches and stuff. But really a fun time. And um, I had a chance. We've participated in a show a few years ago, the very first Veterans Voices, right? Correct. In 2017. And it I... was uh, done on Studios on the Park up in Paso Robles. Yeah, and then, of course, our mutual connection, our other guest for this uh, segment, is none other than Dupris Brescia, and I think we can bring Dupris in on our Zoom call right now. Dupris, good afternoon. Good to see you. Good afternoon. It's great to see both of you, actually, and um, thank you for having me on your podcast. Absolutely. We're we're live right now on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, and of course, the video cast will be up for folks to see in the podcast. And um, gosh, Dupreece, um, I know you're the connector, not just between me and Lynn, but a lot of folks, and we're going to get into that. But, you know, from, from my vantage point, thank you. Uh, Lynn just said, that was only your second show. And she says, what was your first And I told her I participated in the 2017 Veterans Voices. And that's that's really at your prodding and invitation. And so thank you for the second invitation. You are very welcome. And thank you for participating and sharing your um, your beautiful art with everyone. You know, it's uh, it looked amazing on that pink wall, didn't it? It it looked it looked amazing. I think a big part of, of putting the show up. It's just putting the show up <laughs> and the placement um, was absolutely beautiful. I mean, I can see that this is, um, you know, part of your calling and you had a lot of helpers behind the scenes. Um, when I walked in uh, the day of the show, uh, we had this team of Dupreece Brescia Gallery volunteers with these vibrant pink shirts on a uh, pretty cool thing that was. Yes. So um, I wanted to make it identifiable for people and easy for people to uh, know where to go to and who to look to if they needed something. Um, And so we had several different organizations coming together. Um, We had here at the gallery and the people that were uh, working at the gallery, the volunteers that were working here at the gallery. Then we had vet art. Um, and a lot of new faces and people from the vet art organization that were here. Then we also had the VA and we also had the vet center. So I wanted to uh, stand out and I love pink. So um, go pink. 
And since the butterfly garden has become a real signature for the gallery, I thought those would be the appropriate shirts. Um, and who doesn't wear pink well, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was absolutely beautiful. In fact, in the studio, Lynn's Lynn's got her pink uh, t shirt on. She's rocking uh, it. <laughs> you know, layered layered. Now I sound like a fashion advisor here. Uh, layered by the Disney Encanto sweatshirt. You know, because we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. That's fun. I guess they're going to make a ride up. We don't talk about Bruno. Did yep. you hear this? Yep. Yeah, a lot of fun, you guys. But before we give Disney all the commercial, um, I you know, you mentioned to uh the sponsors for the event. Yeah. Um, I had an opportunity to meet Stephen with uh, vetart.org. Yep. Uh, amazing individual, art teacher, instructor, executive director, uh, one of the spearheads and catalysts and, and some of the funding. And then the mental health uh, services. Um, Oversight over and accountability. Oversights and Accountability, Commission. Uh, better known yeah. as MHS OAC. We've got the logos available too on our on our uh, stream today. Yes. But um, Depreece, what a neat opportunity to receive some funding, because it takes money to to keep the lights going and to have a location and to get all the logistics. But my gosh, um, the the attendance. We've got some some pictures that uh, Griffin's putting up. I had a shot that you posted on Facebook. There's a DePriest Gallery Facebook. Um, there, there was one shot DePriest just backing up. You can see, yep. and most of the day, in fact, I tried to go in one door just to get in to see the show, and they were doing videos, you know, and, and interviews. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I ran around to the other door, and the gallery, this was early, was literally already packed. Yeah. For sure. So I, I want to tell you a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah. So Mental Health Services Oversight Accountability Commission um, is the big sponsor behind this because they recognize that art can be used as a tool for mental well-being, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone is afraid to say it heals, it heals. But you know what? It does heal. And I am going to say it because people that engage in the arts. And when I say that, you notice there's an S on the end. It is plural. There are all kinds of arts. Um, we have the performing arts. We have the visual arts. Uh, we have the culinary arts. We have, we have arts in all areas of our lives. And art is something that is good and healthy and promotes well-being for people. And so Mosak was huge in that. And Stephen Dilly Max with, you know, Vet Art is yes. an organization that has been around helping veterans and recognizing the power um, of what art can do and a deep arts engagement, what that can do for people. So um, I can't say enough good things about them, but I will say this, the advertising, there's a huge chunk of money that is thrown at the advertising because that is how you get the word out. Right. And right. It, it is true that veterans do talk a lot and veteran organizations, when we are together, you know, through yes. the Veterans Collaborative, they are able to connect and find out how to reach different demographics of veterans. Um, the New Times was super instrumental yes. in uh, helping sponsor a lot yes. of um, the advertising that was in the newspaper. Yes. Um, KPRL did radio advertising. Um, uh, the, the Paso Robles daily news. I saw did, that. I saw that did yes, really good coverage. Yeah. Yes. Did many different articles in your mm -hmm. artwork and Lynn's artwork and John Somics and Jim Marks, um, and Stan Furtado and Stan Hawkins, uh, and Alana Rodriguez and, um, Curtis Rankin, um, and Chris Silva. Mm. And I'm sure I'm forgetting a few other Lieutenant Colonel Greg Arenas. And Charles Bolin. I'm sorry, yes. what's that, James? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Greg Arenas. Um, Greg was not here for this. Oh. Him and his wife have now moved out of state. But he did was he have, did he have some work at this? Did he have some work at the show? Not in this one. No. Oh, okay. No, not in this particular one. But um, okay. he was bummed that he wasn't going to be able to come back gotcha. out for it because he's been around since day one, and he's the reason that I became a part of the uh, Veterans Collaborative down in Slow. I mean, Greg was the one who dragged me into that. That You know what? And that's a good dragging, um, yeah. kicking and screaming. You've been never smiling so much in your life. You've been a real catalyst. You prodded me, invited me. I think prodding's a fair term. Sure. We did the Veterans Voices podcast. We had you in, and you made a strong connection. First show in my whole life 
which is bizarre. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But Lynn, it did something to me that helped me survive in my studio during during COVID. You know, I was able to carve out literally take things out of the garage. We had a little clandestine operation to get rid of junk. Uh, me and a friend, uh, mm. we, we call it two Italians and a Subaru. I kid you not. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we cleaned out the garage to carve room for art. And art was a part of escape and peace. And then recently, Lynn, out of the blue, you know, I don't know what happened between 017 and 23. That's six years. You know, John Lennon said, life is what happens to us when we're busy making other plans. It's but, um, you you know, you reached out to me and not only was just having, I think, 10 or 11 of my, my pieces there really powerful, but Lynn just being there with my wife and family and, you know, meeting Lynn uh, in person, um, meeting some other vets that I'd never met before, a lot of vet veterans I'd never met before, but to hear the stories of why we're creating art, why it's important um, to be able to share that with different people who came up and really wanted to know why, or, or why did you paint that? Or what does this mean? Um, for lack of a better term, I, I not only feel like I'm receiving heart, I feel like I'm receiving a voice at the same time. And I see that echoed. I mean, Lynn, I was able to walk up to Lynn and give a big hug, and I'd already met her art. I'd already been around, you know, and seen these vibrant photographs. And then the person that we had shared emails. Um, I, I say this a lot to priests. I'm, I, I love social media. I love streaming. We're, you know, using this medium right now. Mm -hmm. But the um, it's icing on the cake. The cake is what you did at the event when we all got together. The cake is us showing up. You and, know um, I, I want to add to that just a minute. Um, so yeah. I'll interrupt you just for a second. Yeah. I want you to know that you guys are seeds of inspiration. Okay. You are chosen. You are, you are inspiring to other people and to other veterans and other people in the community. And you guys are a testament to what art can do for someone. And the more that you share your story and you let people see that maybe instead of taking drugs instead of doing other things why don't you pick up a paintbrush why don't you try and sculpt why don't you cut, cut wood why don't you try the arts and see what they could do for you maybe it's singing maybe it's music maybe it's acting maybe it's um photography uh but you guys sharing your story sharing what what beautiful stuff you create is what may help someone else and i am so happy that you guys said yes and you guys agreed to do this because that's what you are. And, and the truth is you need that. I may be a good rally person and somebody who can talk a lot and get you into it, but you guys are the seeds of inspiration. So I thank you for agreeing to go on this journey and help be that and deliver the message and get other people inspired and other veterans inspired to try art because it does work. I think when you say inspiration, engagement, those are two critical things that I took away. I met uh, a young man that had these little sculptures. I think he participated in the casting uh, uh, thing that you did previously where they did bronze cast. But the artist came, I'm not sure where he came from, but he had all these little heads and little skulls and faces and things. And he said he actually picked this up recently during COVID. This was a new addition to his life and he was just one of many that were there with their art um, I, I walked over and met Lynn and I had just seen some of her iconic photos one with the 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 tongs to a fork uh, and when you stand back it's different than when you walk up and um, I'm in a few moments I'm going to have Lynn talk a little bit about her inspiration for this unique eye uh, that she has and here's what's exciting when I went up and introduced myself and asked about her work, she came, she became alive. I mean, that's a part of, mm -hmm. that's a part of the flow, uh, for lack of a better term, a flow that's part of her life and inspired me and others that day. There was this popcorn thing going on in that small space um, with nice snacks too, with nice beverages and sandwiches too. 
I mean, don't they say if you if you get good food, they'll gather, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it seemed to have worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lynn, your gallery, I encourage our listeners, uh, folks near and wide, if you're coming to visit Paso Robles, if this inspires you, it's a great place to visit. The gallery is located right next, uh, I believe, on 10th Street near Hotel Cheval. Yes. And right in the downtown arts quadrant. Boy, I'll tell you what, the last four or five years, that whole area has come alive. Uh, we went down and had one of the best smash burgers at Mutiny Burger. Shout out to those guys right down the street. They didn't pay anything for that, but they did a good job. <laughs> well, actually, you need to thank Paso Terra. They're the ones who did the catering. Oh, so they catered, oh nice. They catered mm -hmm. breakfast in the morning, um, oh. and they made all fresh pastries and scones, and like French pastry chef was kind of awesome. Um, so they had the coffee bar and the pastries, and then they also did sandwiches at lunch. I did not um, realize that we enjoyed that. That was nice. Yeah. So Paso Terra, my hat goes off to them, nice. Chef Andre and Christina. Uh, nice. Thank you for doing such a splendid job. And it was wonderful to be able to Absolutely. offer that to the public and to all of our participants for free. That was really quite awesome. Um but yes, I would love for you to hear about Lynn's inspiration because I think she's just a phenomenal photographer, a great person, um, and she's a veteran. And, and she's uh, a bit humble. She's a bit humble. I know she served in the Navy. Yeah. And uh, my my dad did also, so we kind of traded a little some stories before we started streaming. But Lynn, um, where where when did you start? We never even talked about this. We saw your work, but when did you first start taking photos? How did that start? I actually got my first camera when I was in A school in Chicago, and I um, a, a school now for our listeners out here in California. Well, all the veterans know what it is. All right, it's it's the school you go to after boot camp gotcha. for your specialty, um, and I picked up a camera and I never put one down. So I've been shooting for a very long time, and then it was all film, and. Uh, transitioned into digital now do you do you stay more into stills or video do you like to do shots or both actually i've done all of it um i also fly a drone um i've done house photography um and made videos for high-end houses here in the area did, did you bring your drone today i've seen something flying around outside <laughs> no, i wonder if that was raining. yours <laughs> all right all right all right just checking maybe next time you come back yep, yep that'd be kind of fun to have the drone come introduce itself yep. huh so um gosh at the show the piece with the fork tongs um how how did that i mean you know we sometimes take our work our inspiration for granted but the innocent bystanders, the audience looks at that. I looked at it and thought that's pretty cool. A little different glimpse. How did that get set up? Actually, it was a school project. I took some photography out of Cuesta College when I first got here, um, learned to develop my own black and white film. We had a project for a macro photography. Uh, macro photography is has a very, very shallow depth of field. It's You have to have it exactly focused properly for the image to come out. And that was actually the first photograph that I took that night. And I ended up shooting a whole roll, and it was the first photograph that I took for my wow. project. Wow. And I have just fallen in love with it. I just think it's a great, great piece. Sometimes our simple work is our best work. Yes. And it kind of prompts us to just do it. Just grab that and do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's why I like doing the live streaming interviews, just to get somebody in and talk, you know? Well, yeah. the advantage of digital is I could have gone back and looked at it and gone, oh, yeah, that's perfect. But on film, you have no idea until you develop it and you're hoping you have a th the shot that you want. I think that experience is good for us to do it and not know. I enjoy that. I, you know, it's also nice to know and to check them out and to click the ones that are the best, but it's also to see the stuff we did raw, you know, just yep. what happened. Yep. Yeah. And so um, just in general, Lynn, subject matter, um, very eclectic, people, design, images. <laughs> the story of my life, yes. I shoot a little bit of everything. Um, I traveled to Europe a few years ago and absolutely fell in love with street art, um, which is different than graffiti. Street art 
is saying something about the community and the area that it is put into. Um, so I fell in love with that, and i am always got my eye out for a great piece of street art. The photo with the woman with the... The book? Fire, yeah, did that come from street art in Europe? No, actually, that came from um, British Columbia, Victoria. My mom and I went up there for Christmas this last year, yeah, and it was it was up there. Wow, wow, that's pretty cool. I know there's a Bob Dylan album cover, Oh Mercy, I think nineteen eighty nine, where he saw something in the streets of New York and sent an agent out to purchase the rights to that, and it's. Uh, Two dancers, uh, Oh Mercy is the title, and it's just a fascinating street art yeah, uh, piece. And, yeah. you know, there is a thing about street art. You, I, I appreciate it. I duplicate it, of course, because I'm photographing it, and I do my very, very best to make sure that whoever that artist was, if I can figure out who it was, to let that be part of the piece also. I had... Yeah. Another piece by artists called Icy and Sot. And it's a fabulous piece of a woman in a hijab with um, other women in gray around the hijab. And it's about oppression. Um, again, it goes with that book, with all the book banning going on. I thought that that was a very poignant piece. And then the Icy and Sot piece. Uh, of rebellion, I think, is a, a very poignant piece for what's going on right now in the world. Images are powerful. I mean, the statement, I actually have this on my Instagram, every picture tells a story. Yes. And every story, the inverse tells a picture, but it really is true. And there's nothing like a timely, powerful, poignant image. It speaks forever. And there's certain iconic photos, you know, whether comedic, historic, painful, I, I can just flash through 10 right now that stick with you, but you catch something, you frame it, and it's there, and you're able to transmit it. And, you know, uh, we AI can't really do that. Uh, <laughs> it's people that do that. It's people that feel that, and I hope we never get away from that. I agree. The other thing about street art is, is that an artist puts it up on the wall, and it does transform over time other artists add to it or take away from it mm -hmm. and it's i always find it very important to make sure that i show the piece as i found it uh -huh. depreece are you still with us oh yeah i'm still here all right all right i know you're actually at the gallery right now and uh, i am you might have been called away with the butterfly sale or something like that i know I mean, but a big I... butterfly flew in here and i had to catch it <laughs> are you serious are you that's good for the podcast i mean i love the story <laughs> so, maybe we'll um, get a mobile camera up there but uh depreece that this is a good interjection inspiration talk a little bit about because we really rely you know Sometimes we don't realize it, but when we have to tell our story, write a bio or do a podcast, yeah. inspiration, I, I got to hear the story of where the butterfly fits into your life, because that's obviously not only a big image on the shirt, the gallery. How did that happen, Dupree? What's the story, um, Dupree, with that? Well, well, that's a very interesting story. And you, did, you weren't prepared for this. We had no notes, right? No, no notes. But you know what? Sometimes um, off the cuff, I think, is really good. Yeah. So, um. I actually moved into this gallery and this space during pandemic. Mm. Um, I left the old space that I was in, which was studios on the park yeah. and during pandemic and came into this space. We were already moving forward with all kinds of stuff and obviously everything's closed down. So we were continuing with veterans voices. It had been super successful and I thought, how are you going to move forward um, with the world in the state that it is? And I, I sit and I'm quiet <clears throat> and in a meditation and just like a chill out, whatever you want to call it. Um, I started thinking about how do you let people know that you're here? How do you move forward if you can't go inside and have an exhibition and do this whole thing? Well, right. what if you did something outside? And so the idea of what if you did something that people could see and you put it up in the trees? So even if they were stuck inside, they could drive by and see something yeah. and like yeah. be inspired in this time when we're all sitting at home. And I thought, wow, yeah. we're sitting at home cocooning. 
like a butterfly. And so I transformed the once indoor exhibition to an outdoor exhibition. And what we did is we cut the wood butterfly wings and they were like, they went from like six inches to four feet. So six inches to 48 inches. And we supplied all the materials. And let me tell you, cutting them butterfly wings out was a job. <laughs> I did not realize the history of this. I guess it's a bit painful. Uh, good outcome, but the process was uh, quite Ooh. a... <clears throat> yeah, it was a lot. And so, yeah. and the idea, and the only thing that veterans and their families had to do was write something positive on the wings of the butterfly. And that is based on Masura Emoto's Hado work, which proved that our words have an impact on mm. water and our mm. bodies because we're mm. 80% water and the entire planet. Yes. So my idea was if we put a good vibe out there in this, um, we are adding to the positive collective on our planet, which is what the whole idea is. And we needed it even more than, uh, than anything else at this particular time. And so the idea was that, and uh, I had no idea that it was going to be as successful um, as it was. I mean, we had, um, you know, people that were driving by, we had bus drivers come in here. We had like people that are workers in, in Paso Robles saying, Oh my God, thank you so much. It was such an inspiration like to see, and they would come by and they would drive by on their route of work and be inspired in a time that we needed it. I mean, this was a time that everybody was going through, oh my yeah. God, is the world going to end, right? Well, no, and and I I drove through, I attended some music in Paso Robles just down the street at um, yeah. the coffee house there in Libretto and was so grateful. Yeah, the windows were open. Yeah, you had the option of having a mask, but my gosh, just to sit out at the cafe and hear music and have a segment of life that was still living was a message of hope and a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Um, and, and I saw that in downtown Paso Robles. I saw that spirit. And you you there, the gallery with the butterflies, were part of that. Well, yeah. thank you. I, I yeah. appreciate that. It, it was a form that followed the function or the function that followed the form, whichever way you want to look at it yeah. of what we were dealing with uh, in our times and that you have to keep moving forward. You know, you're not just going to go sit and close up and um, you know, wait for this to pass. Like we need to move forward in a positive way. So we found a way to transform and make that happen. And then in doing that, we found all these other really beautiful blessings that came from it. So that's how it kind of came to be. And it stuck. And then it, it was like it, during that time, we did workshops that were Zoom. We did workshops that were in person out on the patio. Yeah. Um, and we just kind of made it happen. And uh, Spe- yeah. Speaking of Zoom and podcasts, we were talking with Stephen, director of Vet Art. Uh, .org, the California Veterans Arts Support Organization, who was part of the sponsorship of this event. Yeah. We're talking to Pre. There's a conversation getting some legs about maybe doing this out at uh, Slow Brew the Rock. In fact, Ryan Orr, the entertainment director, is going to be our guest in the next hour, but he's called away at a different event. But there's a conversation going of how cool would that be to do another pop-up in a creative space uh, no matter what's going on, we can still do it. We can go out. We can connect in person, you know. And and then at the same time, uh, Stephen thought, "My gosh, why not do you know simultaneously do podcasting?" So there's a lot of legs uh, to the to the event that just happened. The pop up, I think, is going to continue popping up in many many uh, aspects. That is wonderful. That's exciting news. Yeah, you never know. You know, creativity what it breeds. And, and how it is, it's contagious, you know, and one thing leads to another. And so more art anywhere and all of this are, you know, it, it, they are all different art forms uh, is great. So I'm really kind of stoked to hear that. We, we raise money every year. We do a concert, typically different locations in the county. This last year was at the Siren. In Morro Bay, Louis Ortega is involved. He brings together an all-star mm-hmm. band that sometimes features, I mean, some 
Well, it always features extremely gifted players, but sometimes some very well-known entertainers. And we're going to continue that, maybe do it at Slow Brew the Rock this year, but maybe combine that with the art show with some music and raise money for the bus that takes veterans, but also raise money for the arts uh, oh, that helps go. veterans. So healing goes hand in hand, physical, body, mental, spirit, soul. And I think we need to do events that encompass all that. You well, know? Hey, can I tag on to that real quick? Yeah. Um, one of the sponsors, or not sponsors, but one of the people that were there was um, Slow Veterans, Yes, um, which is a um, therapy center. Uh, they do counseling. Um, they have a, a staff of counselors there. Are they over by the YMCA? They are over by the YMCA. Yeah. And if I can encourage any veteran who's listening, who even has a, a minor thought that I wonder if counseling would help. I mm. need to highly encourage you to go talk to Cindy. She's yeah. the secretary there. Um, I think that's the title. I don't know. Um, she's fabulous. She uh, runs the front office. And see if you can get plugged into them. It's free to veterans. Um, and use the resource. It's a, it's a fabulous location, and they've really got some talented therapists there. Also... Dupree's, I came up and painted a butterfly, and it was fabulous because I was in a creative desert, and it really helped a lot to get things going again. So thank you for that. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Your butterfly's still out there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I want to tag on to what you said, Lynn, and thank you so much for mentioning the, the Vet Center. I looked up their web address, and they are located at 1070 Southwood Drive. Their phone number for our listeners in the San Luis Obispo County area, direct line, 805-782-9101. They're open most days, uh, 8 to 4.30, some days 8.30, closed Saturday and Sundays. And that, of course, is the uh, Veterans San Luis Obispo Vet Center. And uh, you can Google that. And some excellent, what what great folks. They came out. They had a table. They were engaged. Oh, they're just fabulous. And I, they have, have helped me through some things. And I can say nothing but great things about them. And if you need therapy or somebody yeah. in your life suggests checking out therapy, I can't encourage you enough to go talk to them. I, I appreciate that, Lynn. We were talking before we started the stream. Um, I started raising, you know, I, I don't like to pat myself on the back, but just started actively involved raising money for veterans. I got five or 10 years into it and said, I'm a veteran. <laughs> I might be taking this bus. <laughs> it's well, it's easy to do for others because we're trained to be part of a team and we always look out. Right. But sometimes we're the one that needs the help at a given time. It's kind of hard. Yep. But it's, it's hard to ask so for help. it is. And I'm, you know. And yet through art, I've been able to receive some help, make some community connections through podcasting, through meeting a lieutenant colonel that wanted to do a podcast series. My mm -hmm. life has been enriched in so many ways. Um, as, as we draw to the close of our segment, um, as we've put those different images up on the screen, there was one image uh, of a drum circle. Now, I missed that. I ran off uh, to go meet family, to bring some family back to the event. We were doing a little carpooling. But uh, as we show that to to our listeners, uh, Lynn and DePriest, can you talk a little bit about what happened with the drum circle, how that came about, and what that was like? I actually have to give that one to DePriest. Okay. Sure. Okay. So the drum circle, um, we recognize music uh, and music therapy as a form of the arts. And the drum circle was something that would be uh, engaging, something that people could um, participate in. And so the, it was a music therapist that came in to um, execute this. And as you can tell, we had probably close to 50 people like, you know, in that circle or just around it. But um, it was it was pretty powerful and it lasted for, I would say, probably pretty close to an hour. It and um, mm. I was indoor and outdoor for it. I was both in the serenity room with the pyramid um, speaking with some people about it and we were watching through the window and then we were out also, I was the one who took that picture that you're talking about from up above, mm -hmm. um, on the stairs looking down and it was amazing. So 
the people, there's something about music and the vibration of music that is healing. And yes. I think there are, there are still so many things that are really um, not completely understood about the vibrational healing that takes place. And music is a huge part of that. And uh, I think the people that participated, the ones that I spoke with, basically all said they could feel it. They could feel and they were moved. There were some people that cried. There were some people that just absolutely loved that particular element about some of the different things that took place throughout the Veterans Pop-Up Cafe, Pop-Up Arts Cafe. And um, so, yeah, I, and it was unfortunate that that everybody didn't get to experience every single part of it. But what I do think is that when we are ready that experience will be available. Mm. It's like the universe's divine guidance and bringing it all together. And so the fact that you got to see that there was something there and uh, granted you're getting other people and your family members to come in, but the next time, you know what, you are going to be there and you're going to be a part of it and you're going to experience it. Um, so yeah, so that was the, yeah. uh, the drum circle. Strengthening a sense of community is the impact of um, musicians talk about that when they play together. There's just something spiritual yeah. that transcends the the beats. It's just something that connects. Yeah, and and with COVID now, we cry out for that. It's going to be hard to lock us up again. It's going to be really hard to lock us up again. I mean, that patio experience on a Saturday. I wanted to stay all eight hours. It was such a fun time. <laughs> Well, I was here till nine o'clock at night, see, <laughs> actually see. till nine 30 or 10. I think by the time we finished dinner, we all, the gallery was still open, uh, but we had a big, huge 20 person dinner out on the patio and it was awesome. Big barbecue. Yeah. And then Lynn, cool. a Congressman Pan Panetta. Yeah. Congressman Jimmy Panetta. Jimmy uh, Panetta came. was there on site. What yes. a, what an experience mm -hmm. to have somebody come representing, you know, the federal level. Uh, to speak to all of all of us veterans yes. and then to take time to prepare certificates and to acknowledge uh, the participation. I, I felt like a million dollars. Good. You I, should. I checked my wallet, didn't have it, but I felt like it. I really did. And <laughs> just the and the, the looks, the look on 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 the faces of people getting recognized. I what a surprise. What a blessing. Uh, what a sense of appreciation, you know. And um, I, I got the sense that he makes the rounds, but he really had a good time seeing this happening. Oh, goodness. I think so, too. I mean, the yeah. you know, the you know, you imagine you're a representative, right? You're an elected official and you have all of these responsibilities on your shoulders. But there are certain things that you do on a personal level recognize the importance of, and I think healing and the well-being of our veterans, mm -hmm. the reason that our country is free is due mm -hmm. to our veterans is due to, you know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't step away from, uh, England in the very beginning easily, if you know yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. you know, we had to fight for our freedom. And yeah. so, you know, the armed forces have been ongoing throughout the years to make sure that we remain the democracy that, you know, people are having all kinds of discussions about. But the fact is, there's a lot of gratitude for the people that were willing to step up for whatever yes. reason, yes. you were willing to step up and do this. And so, you know, my hat goes off to him, he really felt it was important. I told him that not everyone was still here of mm -hmm. the artists that some had to go and sit down. We had yeah. of all different age levels and, you know, and he said, you know, I really want to say everyone's name, even if they aren't here. Like that mm -hmm. to me is pretty darn cool. So mm -hmm. uh, I had a lot of respect for that. And yes, the people that were here and did get to hear their names spoken and were honored in front of everyone that was here, um, really appreciated it. There were only a few that were really kind of shy and were like, oh God, please don't make me go up. But um, <laughs> and I and I met I met um, meeting Lynn has enriched my life, um, and I'm looking forward to learning more. We're gonna, Lynn, um, this has been a brief 45 quick minutes. Yeah. We'd love to have you come back. Maybe when Dupree can can be here, maybe a different time or up at the studio, we'll stream. But we'd love to dig in a little farther. I, I'm going to participate in the next one. I'm putting it out there right now. I, I guess I've been invited. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. But. Being able for veterans to share stories and meet other veterans, there's a commonality. 
And I don't even need to hear all the details um, of Lynn's service to have respect, to get a sense of what she went through. There's something we understand when we put it out there. No matter what part of our life, you're committed. You give yourself. And I appreciate that of a veteran that said, I'm going to do this for X number of time for my country. And then now here's Lynn involved in expressing her talents, but also encouraging others to do the same. Um, I guess Likewise. that sums it up. That really sums it up. Likewise. Yeah. And we're richer, DePriest, we're richer people for this experience. Thank you for spearheading this. Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you so much, both of you, for participating. You guys are awesome. So just keep up the good work and thank you for your service. And we're looking forward to coming up and seeing that poster that all the veterans signed on display at your gallery. That was beautiful. I thought that was a great touch to have everybody put their names on that. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool too. <laughs> all right. And I can't so, wait to get it up on the wall. <laughs> so for our listeners, Lynn, where can folks find some of your work? Uh, nowhere right now. Okay. <laughs> at the next show? Oh, definitely. Okay. I love that. Definitely. And then, of course, Deprice Brescia Gallery. Dot com Is that the web address, Deprice? Um, It will be depreesbrescia.com, and that'll take you to the gallery. Yeah. Nice. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Just simply Deprice. D-E-P-R-I-S-E-B-R-E-C-I-A. Thank you. It's a city in Italy. Just remember that. Brescia. I love it. I love it. I got to go sometime. <laughs> and then, and then, of course, we want to thank our sponsorship, um, Dining for Charities, diningforcharities.com, that keeps this uh, stream alive. Also contributes to Wood Humane Society. Every purchase for half off dining, 15% every month goes to the Charity of the Month. This month, the Wood Humane Society. And then uh, also to Slow Talk Podcasting Studio. We provide uh, podcasting services if you want to create a podcast distribute market record produce we're available for you check us out slowtalk.com uh, we would not be here without the help behind the scenes have an incredible streaming individual has been with us for quite some time I really appreciate uh, Griffin Brashear is one of the best in the whole region that I know and he's kept this smooth and um, I just really want to give a shout out to him and then some of the other folks behind the scenes that make this happen of course Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be back at 3 o'clock. Josh Zimmerman, The Silent Comedy on YouTube and Facebook. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Deprice. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys have a beautiful day. Have you a great too. day. Look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>